Warning, the following podcast contains all the offensive words that aren't actually offensive. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Adam and Eve, ZipRecruiter, and by the new exercise program for religious people who want to stay in shape by throwing temper tantrums every time something offends their Lord and Savior. CrossFit. Ah, oh, fuck. Fuck. We'll have to get back to you on a name. And now, The Scathing Atheist. This is Dr. Kimberly Urban, doctor of neuroscience, former researcher at one of the top children's hospitals in the country, current purveyor of knowledge for one of the world's most advanced live cell imaging systems, and seriously overqualified wife. I took time away from important shit to tell you that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men and women, some of whom went on to become fucking doctors other than MDs, whether you like it or not. It's March 11th. And when I looked into my heart for Christ, all I found was a bunch of blood. Damn it, I'm no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Chris Delia's New Jersey, <laughs> <sighs> Cincinnati Red State and Redtown Blue State, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, you're more likely to get a vaccine just by listening to this podcast. Huh. One fish, two fish. What the fuck is next? Colors and numbers got canceled. I don't know what's Damn next. It. Damn it. <laughs> And we'll find out what it would look like if the Bible got stoned. But first, the diatribe. Yeah, I think the biggest selling point of atheism might be the fact that we're not scared of our shadows. Like religious people look at atheism and they oftentimes say like, I don't know, the idea of that formless oblivion after I die, that's a little scary. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. But it's also real. You motherfuckers are scared of cartoon dragons. You're afraid about an immortal goat man that's trying to trick you into enjoying butt stuff. You're afraid when your total at the fast food joint comes to six dollars and sixty six fucking cents. I feel like the afterlifeless void fear has to pale in comparison to all the shit you have to be afraid of, right? I mean, I mean, it's tempting to say, yeah, but they don't actually believe in any of that shit, which is no doubt entirely true for some of them and partially true for the rest. Like, I mean, if you honestly believe that the king of evil had an army of invisible torture monsters engaged in a constant battle to trick you into winding up in the internal fucking pain dimension, you'd be a nervous wreck every second of every day. They can't possibly all the way believe that shit, but some of them definitely somewhat believe some of it. And even that seems debilitatingly terrifying. Of course, the way they manage to function day to day around that fear is the same way that they manage to cling to their beliefs, despite the overwhelming evidence that they're wrong. They just don't let themselves think about it all that hard. I mean, consider ghosts, right? Like I have multiple members of my family that are legitimately afraid of ghosts, despite the fact that all of those ones are Christian and there's definitely no room in Christian theology for ghosts. But somehow they maintain this demonstrably false belief enough so to be scared of it. Now, I, you know, I ask you to imagine what that must be like, but I feel like most of us can just remember what it was like. I think most of us grew out of it when we were still children, but you can probably still remember what it was like walking into that creepy ass basement or taking the trash out after dark, walking out past that spooky ass tree. You know, at, at the point where I was maximally scarable, the big thing was alien abduction. So I was terrified that there were little gray men with anal probes hiding around every corner. And I'm sure many of you maintained at least some of those irrational fears into adulthood. You know, whether they came from your religious sources or, or just from a simple lack of skepticism. But think about how irrational our fears are in these things. I mean, beyond the fact that they don't exist. I, I mean, in none of my examples would we even be remotely scared of the correct thing. I, I, I mean, like, what, what's scarier? The fact that you could get snatched up by aliens who would shove stuff up your butt or whatever sinister ass shit those aliens have in mind that required so much knowledge of the human rectum. But when the fear overtook me, I was just afraid of how creepy it would be to see those like bulbous alien heads with those featureless eyes. Consider ghosts. If ghosts are a thing, the least scary aspect of them is that they might rattle a fucking chain in your basement now and again. 
Right. The scary thing is the idea that after death, you could somehow get stranded on the earth with nothing better to do than bum around your old house, rattling change. That posthumous limbo is so much scarier than any kind of ghost sighting. And yet that's not even the part of the ghosts that scare people. Uh, lastly, consider Satan. I mean, him and his torture chamber are plenty scary, but the truly terrifying thing about that situation would definitely be the omnipotent deity that continues to humor the motherfucker. The God that you're worshiping that's constantly like, oh, darn it, Satan got another one of them souls. I, I better vaguely suggest which religion is correct through toast better next time, I guess. Like, that's so much scarier than the dude who just admits up front that he's all about some evil and torture and shit. So, so sure, if you think rationally about any one of those fears, you'd fear them differently. But at the same time, if you thought about them rationally, you wouldn't fear them at all. Right. But to examine questions about ghosts and Satan critically is to open up the door to doubt and eventually disbelief. Fear of the irrational is the price of being irrational, which is no more profound than to say that the price of being stupid is stupidity. But that's not the only price. Right. Because there actually are things that we need to be afraid of. There are very serious issues that you can only adequately address if we afford them the proper amount of fear. Things like climate change, nuclear proliferation, the goddamn ongoing pandemic. And we've seen over and over again that those most inclined to fear the imaginary are least likely to fear these very real threats we're facing. I, sometimes I guess this is because religious people are all just all feared out, right? There's only so many things you can spend your days anxious about. Other times it's simply because they've decoupled fear from rationality and real shit takes more effort to understand. Still other times it's because their religion straight up tells them there's nothing to fear, right? Like when the end of the world is the victory condition, existential threats don't hit with the impact they probably deserve. But regardless of the individual reasons, the overriding cause is cowardice. Okay, when the things that you fear most are imaginary, their solutions can also be imaginary. As scary as Satan is, all you need is the magic Jesus words to thwart him. As terrifying as hell is, you're never going to go there. As scary as ghosts are, Jesus already put in a good word for you. Some, uh, that's some other motherfucker's problem. When you graduate to fearing real stuff, the answers are never that simple. Hell, there's not even a guarantee that there is an answer. And thus we come to the bizarre conclusion that far too many religious people are terrified of a fearless life. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast and bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the Pompey and Crassus to my Caesar Heath and Wright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to triumph? Yeah, yeah, everything ended super well for those three. Well, ended, so, looking ended, forward to okay. this. Bad. Went, Is this about my plot to stab <laughs> you, Noah? Because that was a birthday prank, and I need you to get over all right, it. Okay? okay, all right. Well, while I once again angrily explain to Eli what Ides mean, we're going to pause for a word from our first sponsor this week, Adam and Eve. It's the opposite of evens. Perfect. All right. Here we go. Hey, he, Jesus, Eli, uh, what's funny here? Just sneak right a up. plastic shark that eats okay, dicks a or a plastic dick that eats sharks? Yeah, we're, we're trying to settle a bet. Oh, great. Noah's here, too. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I guess the the shark that eats dicks. I See, think that's I told you. I, ah, fine. Hey, uh, what you got there? <laughs> oh, this? Uh, this is just uh, this is a snack. Uh, you were going to... You were going to eat a slightly warmed banana peel warmed, for a yes. snack? Yep. Yes, I was. Uh huh. Keith, if if you're looking for a better masturbation experience, why don't you just try adamandeve.com? <laughs> okay. I have no idea what, what you're talking about. This is my snack. This is unrelated to this weird thing you said. But what's adamandeve.com? Adamandeve.com is the number one adult toy superstore, and they've got way better ways for you to make your downstairs bits feel good. Okay. Again, just I have no idea what you're referencing right now, but... uh. Really? Adam and Eve has, has better stuff? Yes, really. Look, Put it downstairs. a lot of people, even without religious hangups, have doubts about buying sex toys for masturbation. But there's a ton of really good toys out there. Better than a somewhat warm banana peel? Way better. And there's no better place to get them than adamandeve.com. They're a sex and sex worker positive LGBTQ friendly business that got to start distributing birth control to underserved areas. Wow, that sounds like a business I genuinely want to support, like for real. Yeah, it really is. And right now, you can select almost any one item for 50% off. And then Adam and Eve loads on the free stuff. That's right. Enter offer code SCATHING and check out and you get 10 tantalizing free gifts. Plus free shipping. That's SCATHING. S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G. Offer code SCATHING at checkout at adamandeve.com. 
All right, guys, I'm in. Thanks. You're you're not gonna eat your snack, right? No, yes. <laughs> of course, I'm gonna eat my snack. I'm gonna have it right now. <clears throat> is that is that mm. a good banana peel? Mm. Mm. Yep. It's a pithy. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, in Green Eggs and Ken Ham News, we have a story about Dr. Seuss and panicky Christian people. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken Ham isn't directly involved, but he worked for my, my thing at the beginning. It's pretty sweet. Hey, worth it. <laughs> worth it. Green Eggs and Ken Ham's with Dr. Seuss. Also, he did, Ken Ham, he did once freak out when a government official got sworn in using a Dr. Seuss book instead of a Bible. Well, that's right, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. Anyway, here's the story for today. Dr. Seuss got murdered by Ray Bradbury with a <laughs> flamethrower last week. <laughs> Conservatives are freaking out. Obviously, that's not what happened, but that's the approximate spin and the approximate magnitude of the reaction. What actually happened is the estate of Dr. Seuss decided that six of their books had problematic racial stereotypes, like, for example, a Chinese man with literal slits for eyes, super, super offensive. So they're not going to publish those six books anymore because liberals hate children exactly. and hate learning. Right. Yeah, look, if you're a white person over the age of, I don't know, like 35 or whatever, and you've never gone back to something that you liked as a kid and said, damn, was that some problematic shit? That's because you are some problematic shit. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> Stick your finger. Yeah. Her finger hurts when you touch yourself now. Yeah. yeah. It's weird how nobody defending these pictures uses the actual images as their proof. Uh -huh, huh. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I never saw anybody point to the, the pictures. Themselves. That's so weird. So I'll start with the most reasonable Christian reaction I could find to this. And it comes from the spokesman for a literal hate group. So <laughs> not a good sign for Christianity. <laughs> Jeff Johnston of Focus on the Family, wow. an SPLC listed hate group, he admitted that some of the books have depictions that are problematic. But, you know, not problematic enough to let a company make a choice in the free market about its own product, mm -hmm. of course. According to Johnston, quote, as Christians, we want to be temperate and not rush to judgment. Dr. Seuss was a product of his time. Um, Side note, his time was a product of Christianity. Yes, right. Anyway, <laughs> continuing, it feels like we're destroying our own history by the knee-jerk reaction to yank books. Wow. End quote. Well, well you know, if, if there's anybody known for restraint and the condemnation of things that offend them, it's focus on the family. So at least they're being consistent, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So Jeff Johnston finished giving his interview with the Christian Post. That's what that was from. And then he probably turned on Tucker Carlson tonight, mm. where he heard a less reasonable response than the one he just provided, again, on behalf of a hate group. Tucker Carlson went on a giant rant about cancel culture, obviously, even though all the canceling was done by the pub. They canceled what they wanted to of their own stuff, yep. obviously. Self-canceled. <laughs> yeah, self-canceled. Thank you. And then Tucker Carlson mentioned that Dr. Seuss had lots of books about anti-bigotry which is true and irrelevant to this yeah. particular well, point. Irrelevant to his point, yeah. Yes, 100% irrelevant to his point. The company decided <laughs> to make it so all their books are anti-bigotry. There you go. <laughs> That's what they're doing, or at least a step in that direction. Right, yeah. But that was two entire sentences of nuance just now that we we're talking about, so Tucker was not having it. No. He told his millions of viewers on Fox News, quote, if we lose this battle, America is lost. What? Okay. I Who mean, had Dr. What? Seuss's <laughs> yeah. racist cartoons as the line for America in the pool? <laughs> I had freedom fries back in oh, 2001, oh, so I am yeah. out. Yeah. I'm way out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, apparently America is lost because this already happened. Yeah. Um, Tucker seems to think it was like something that could be prevented. No, this is done. Tucker lost the butter battle. <laughs> <laughs> he lost it to the company he thought he was fighting for. It's, it's a weird situation. Yep. It's also worth noting that the books they stopped publishing account for approximately 0% of sales from the Dr. Seuss catalog. Yeah. None of them are the most popular titles, but they're all selling, these, these six, they're all selling for way too much money all of a sudden because crazy people think they should protest the Seuss company 
by purchasing a bunch of books from the Seuss company. I, that's so, so I got driven fucking up. stupid. <laughs> I, yes, like, at this point, I'm convinced somebody's going to become a millionaire by saying the libs canceled giving them $14 cash. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my watch. You take Venmo, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Bottom line, if you're keeping score at home, the biggest issues facing conservative America right now are the well-being of an actress who's too much of a bigot for the Walt Disney Corporation, <laughs> <laughs> the gender identity of a plastic potato toy, yep. mm-hmm. and whether or not to secede from the union in response to that. And of course... The God-given right to buy new copies of a children's book with a drawing of Mickey Rooney and yellow face from Breakfast to Tiffany's. Thanks, yeah. That's the problem <laughs> for them right now. The, the stuff facing our nation during this pandemic, yeah. Ah, oh, a simpler world. And in health-bound heathens news tonight, yet another study has shown that atheism is only bad for your health if you're around Muslim extremists with machetes. And I, I know that just <laughs> seemed like something so goddamn obvious we wouldn't need a study about it, let alone a study of the yet another variety. But once again, godless researchers have felt the need to beat back the persistent canard that atheism is bad for your health. So let me back up a bit to the root of this shit. Studies frequently show that weekly church attendance is correlated with longer life and better health. And if you're unfamiliar with the whole concept of correlation, that sounds really impressive, (laughs) right? But it turns out that weekly attendance at anything not classified as treatment is correlated with longer life and better health, right? Because it means you're healthy enough to get up every week and go do a thing. People who get pedicures more often than they get chemo also live longer, but that's not because of the healing powers of fucking foot massage. But but religious people like to ignore all of that and pretend that there is only causality. Until you point out how much more likely religious people are to rape and murder people. Right, yeah. All of a sudden, they're talking about Hume and Kant yeah, right. and the tricky nature of causation. Oh, you're into the philosophy yeah, now. Cool. Rules of cool. physics work backwards as well as forwards. <laughs> really la, 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 I can't hear you from inside the red balloon. <laughs> right, yeah. Now, this idea of divine protection has been debunked a number of times. Some researchers have pointed out that the same health benefits crop up for people who attend weekly atheist meetups, for example. Others have pointed out how when you actually compare apples to apples, say religious, non-smoker, white, male, age, such and such, such and such income with their atheist counterpart, the advantage completely disappears. But this latest rebuttal comes from a far more direct angle and just shows that a random sampling of atheists aren't any less healthy than a random sampling of people. Pretty simple. Right. Which is why I'm going with my new theory that bald with a goatee makes you live longer. That's right. We have the numbers, everyone. We can do this thing. No, no. Nothing that's generally male is going to do that for you. So, <laughs> it's true. Th- th- so this comes to us from hastily named comic book villain Dr. Speed, who just published a new paper in the <laughs> Journal of Religion and Health demonstrating that atheism has no measurable negative effect on your physical health, emotional health, or psychological well-being. Just use your middle name or something. Right, yeah, or just fight Sonic once and for all, yeah. So he also points out (laughs) that the research that demonstrates the difference in outcomes between religious and non-religious people often uses proxies for atheism, right? Like, i.e., checks the never box on church attendance or marks zero for how important is religion to me rather than self-identification. Whereas with religion, it's almost always them saying, yeah, no, I'm a Christian. Right. So the data he used for the study, in fact, was 10 years old precisely because he had trouble finding data sets that defined atheist as person who checked the box marked atheist. And if you're using one standard to determine X and a different one to determine not X, your conclusion can't help but be flawed. Yeah. Also, just for the record, if that data was from 2021, we're way more likely to be vaccinated. Yeah, that too. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Add that to the health. And therefore not dead. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's actually going to change these numbers a bit. Anyway, the bottom line of his research is that Dr. Speed and his team were unable to find any health deficits among the atheists. In his own words, quote, for all intents and purposes, atheists did not substantially deviate from non-atheist groups, end quote. And that's damn impressive as a result when you consider that our side has had Eli this whole time. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Every day I wake up, some all-state life insurance salesman screams, how? at their computer and lights another cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) And in Stop the Stolen News, we have a story about Mike Lindell. Again. As many of you already know, Lindell is a pillow engineer and political scientist 
who produced and starred in a documentary about the 2020 election being stolen from Donald Trump. That movie was called Absolute Proof. We did it on God Awful Movies. And I guess that didn't tell the whole story. Absolute Proof wasn't the whole story. <laughs> wasn't quite enough. <laughs> because Lindell announced last week that he's about to release Absolute Proof 2. Okay, now it's Absolute. Or something <laughs> like that. Okay, he's doing a right. sequel. Look, even the never-ending story got a sequel, okay? <laughs> yeah, but at least that one had a dead horse we could be sad about beating, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> They all, they both, both stories had the same turtle in it, though. He That's true. In both films. <laughs> That's true. So here's a quick background for anyone who hasn't been following the Homerian epic of Mike Lindell's life. He started his career by dropping out of college to pursue highly lucrative business opportunities in the carpet cleaning and lunch wagon sectors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then after that, crack <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> that lasted about 30 years. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then he invented... The world's greatest biblical pillow became a millionaire, campaigned for Donald Trump, bailed out Kyle Rittenhouse from jail, made a movie about Dominion voting machines, shooting votes to Europe along, coincidentally, the exact same path as airlines go to Europe, (laughs) got kicked off Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, got sued by Dominion for $1.3 billion, and finally announced another movie with a budget of, I don't think he realizes this, but approximately $1.3 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss anything important? What else has he uh, done? The, the anti-Planned Parenthood movie he produced that we had to watch wherein he paid to oh, have a God, fake right. Planned Parenthood sign erected just so he could knock it down with construction <laughs> that, equipment. That happened. Yep, that's true. And here's the big announcement from last week. Lindell went on the Victory Channel. I don't know what that is, but it's apparently a channel. He went on the Victory Channel to tell everyone about the new documentary. And apparently he's also working on a lawsuit along with this documentary. And that lawsuit is going to lead to a Supreme Court ruling. It's going to be nine to zero. Oh. And it's going to put Trump back in the White House. That's that's what Lindell thinks. According to my lie, which I'm really happy about. That's <laughs> what we're calling him from now on. <laughs> According to my lie, begin quote, begin sick, just blanket (laughs) within the next 10 days or so there's going to be a platform i'm putting out that's going to be the focal point where everyone can go out and there's they can't stop (laughs) youtube and all this stuff that's the end of the sentence Uh, yep (laughs) what we're going to do i'm continuing what we're going to do we're going to put out evidence every single day more and more as we build this up and all this other evidence is showing i'm going to come out with another documentary showing all the foreign interference We're bringing it up. We got the case. It's almost ready. And when we bring it in five, six weeks before the Supreme Court, now let me tell you, by the time it gets there, everyone's going to see, everyone's going to know it, including all nine of them justices. End quote. It's all so clear now. (laughs) Yeah, I got that. (laughs) Yeah. I hate it when trailers spoil the movie. Maybe that's just me. I just, ah. (laughs) And one last thing. If anyone wants to see one of the greatest moments in the history of accidental comedy during a news show. Check out Mike Lindell's interview on Newsmax last month. Newsmax, by the way, is an extremely conservative outlet. And they were trying to talk about the cancel culture angle of Lindell getting kicked off Twitter. But Lindell wouldn't stop shouting lies about the election. So the Newsmax anchor spends literally an entire minute talking over Lindell's rant. Lindell would not stop. The news guy's reading a legal disclaimer to avoid getting sued by Dominion. And then the news guy literally walks off the set. Yeah. And they're also probably getting sued by Dominion. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Newsmax is along with Mike Lindell and Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani, Fox News. And of course, One News America, who aired Absolute Proof Part 1 <laughs> with a huge disclaimer, probably still getting sued. Well, and the funniest thing about that, of course, is that they had him on to complain about cancel culture, so they couldn't then cancel him, right? They couldn't just <laughs> shut off his fucking mic, bro. They're like, God damn it, we've painted ourselves into a corner. What are we, CPAC? <laughs> so they canceled, they had to cancel themselves. <laughs> They're like, okay, we're leaving. We're leaving. Now. I'm, I'm going to go sit in the green room with Piers Morgan. You guys, <laughs> you guys do this. I'm going to read to think it happened on Mulberry Street. Yeah. Over <laughs> <Michael Dunn. laughs> Tell you about all the pictures. This again. All right. Well, I need some time to process the realization that I have more Mike Lindell to watch in the future. So we're going to take a quick break and hand things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. 
A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. It makes you a slut, right? It, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Massage. I bet Pastor Stuart Allen Clark is pissed at me. A week and a half ago, he very clearly auditioned for this segment, and it was one of the most impressive auditions I've ever seen. But I didn't do a twin last week, so he got left out. But, and let me be super clear here, it wasn't for a lack of misogyny. So first of all, Stuart Allen is his first name, which strikes me as bullshit right there. Pick a fucking name, dude. You have two names that could easily be reduced to a single syllable, and you expect a motherfucker to say out all four syllables? You ain't that important, Stu. Anyway, secondly, and far more importantly, Stewie earned himself a bit of unwanted celebrity a couple weeks back when a video of one of his sermons went viral. In the sermon, he implies that cheating husbands are the wife's fault for not looking better. He says he put a weight limit on his wife that triggers divorce, and perhaps worst of all, implied that women should strive to be more like Melania Trump. Now... (laughs) Unlike most stories of pastors spewing unchecked misogyny, this one doesn't end in his promotion or a six-figure GoFundMe campaign. Yet. Instead, within 24 hours of the video going public, the church took down its Facebook page, deleted its YouTube archives, and announced Stu would be taking a leave of absence to seek professional counseling. Because apparently, just don't be an asshole was too much for him to handle on his own. But as inartfully as Stewie rendered it, it's not like his message is uncommon in conservative Christian circles. I saw a story a few days later out of Lubbock, Texas, where a high school chivalry assignment encouraged female students to dress in a feminine manner to please men, not to complain or whine, and to, quote, walk behind men daintily as if their feet were bound, end quote. And no, this wasn't just an explanation of how shit used to be. The students were asked to get signatures from adults verifying that they were behaving in a chivalrous manner and would get points on the assignments for every signature. So parents saw this assignment and rightly complained. After it was shared in a private Facebook group, it was replaced. But holy hell, how the fuck does it take parental complaints for a school to realize it's not okay to hand out assignments telling girls not to show intellectual superiority for fear of offending men and that, quote, ladies must obey any reasonable request of a male, end quote. Of course, we already know the answer to that question, don't we? And the answer is America. This is a country, after all, that wound itself into a state of frothing outrage when it came to light that the new Space Jam movie reduced the size of Lola Bunny's tits. And I guess expecting more from them was my own mistake. And with that, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. And in Stand Up and Be Counted news. Remember how Noah just told you about how we're dealing with constant bullshit, about her religion is good for you because nobody studies secular communities? Well, good news. Someone is doing something about that. And you, yes, you podcast listener, can participate. Thanks to a superstar lineup that includes professor of religious studies at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and better looking Paul Bettany, Joseph Blankholm, as well as senior fellow at the Institute of Humanist Studies, board member of the American Humanist Association, and a man so sexy he's legally required to list himself as a flood hazard, Joaquim Navarro (laughs) Riviera, PhD, we are finally being studied. And you can participate. So give the scientific world a better understanding of your beliefs, the communities you belong to, and, as Noah pointed out, just the fact that you fucking exist. Yeah, because let, let's face it, no matter what anybody that loves you says, the only people who care about your opinion are doing surveys, okay? Exactly, exactly. The reality of the world. Now, I do have to point out that as good-looking, smart, and sensual as Joseph and Yuhim are, their survey can be found at the rather tricky to remember secularcommunities.com forward slash 2021 SCS. So we here at The Scathing Atheist have made it a little easier for you. Yes, I can buy prank domain names for good as well as evil. So you'll find their survey at atheismsurvey.com, which Joe and Yuhim, if you're listening, that cost $12. I'm just saying, guys, it was $12, atheismsurvey.com. Or if for some reason you find atheismsurvey.com tricky to remember I've also directed I will fuck your dad.com to their survey as well so get out there and be counted atheismsurvey.com or I will fuck your dad.com I, th- I feel like that's right. easy to remember yeah right 
You're going to get those guys some weird web traffic by accident. With this. If it happens, it happens. <laughs> okay. Probably a lot of atheists, though. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah. I am an atheist. Huh? <laughs> and finally tonight, in Oh My Soul to the Company Store News. Fantastic. Atheism got a, thank you. Atheism got a big rhetorical boost a couple of weeks ago when Robert Jeffress admitted that heaven fucking blows. <laughs> uh, this accidental confession came during an appearance on Jim Baker's show. And no, the revolution was not that heaven would eventually include those two assholes, though that should be enough of an argument against it in terms of retirement destinations. But it turns out that it's going to be even worse than that, because in addition to being full of jackass Christians, heaven is also going to be filled with manual labor. Huh. That's right. According to Jeffers, there will still be work in heaven, but we're going to enjoy it because of, I shit you not, the lack of government regulation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will build you a tower of irregular lead anvils for that bag of untaxed gold. Whee! Free labor and trade. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm taking my 15, boss. Just kidding. There is no 15. This is paradise. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. So... Harkening back to the idyllic life of Dickensian factory workers, Jeffers painted this utopian picture of an unregulated labor market by pointing out that if God didn't intend for us to work, he wouldn't have made the simple act of survival require constant backbreaking effort. Quote, remember, God created us to be workers. Work was a gift from God before the fall of Adam and Eve. But in heaven, all of the things that drain the joy out of work, bodies that grow tired, strained relationships, government regulations, all of those things will be removed and we're going to enjoy work like God intended us to enjoy it. End quote. Oh, if I have time to lean, I do have time to clean. The afterlife is awesome. <laughs> yes. This is such a bad sell of literal paradise. Right? How hard yes. is it to sell paradise? I got to be honest. I truly don't understand this shit. When it comes to work, government regulations are pretty much universally about workers' safety, pay, or breaks. Yep. Yeah. Or like, you know. The Thirteenth Amendment. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, well, right, right. As silly as it sounds to hear them railing against environmental regulations because the new light bulbs look gay, I, I, I still <laughs> yet to hear anybody rallying around less safe workplaces. And even the shittiest Republicans in the Senate aren't arguing to abolish the minimum wage. Well, well no, except, except Rand Paul, right? So yeah, yep, right. Uh, so and probably Marco Rubio. But 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 the key takeaway here is that the next time the burden of mortality rears up inside you, you can comfort yourself with the fact that at least the black void of nothingness is better than Christian heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and on that uplifting note, we're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, we will quite emphatically not like Ike. <laughs> I just know. Stop. Hi, I'm No Illusions. And I'm that terrible lady who works at your job. Have you ever wondered how the heck I ended up working here? Well, that's because hiring is hard and your job didn't use ZipRecruiter. All right, I'm taking my 20. Uh, we were kind of in the middle of something. I said I'm taking my 20. Okay, all right. Well, what ZipRecruiter, you ask? It's the smartest way to hire. When you post a job on ZipRecruiter, it gets sent out to over 100 of the top job sites with one click. One second, forgot my purse. Okay. There it is. Then ZipRecruiter's matching technology finds people with the right skills and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other services may overwhelm you with applications to sift through, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. Hey, yeah, Doreen, I'm about to be on break, so I thought I would call you loudly right now. One second, let me put you on speakerphone. Of course. In fact, ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in the first day. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Oh, you're back already? No, I still haven't taken my 20. Okay, but you did leave. Now I'm taking my 20. Oh. 
many people have called Johannes Gutenberg's perfection of movable type printing the most important invention of all time. And in fairness to them, when they said that, they had no idea it would one day be used to produce David Icke's Everything You Need to Know But Have Never Been Told. <laughs> so while they update their lists, we're going to dive back into this piece of shit. We suffered through the introduction and stuff last week, but now we actually have to crack open chapter one. Spoiler alert, we will not finish it tonight. No. We went in with the intent of finishing it, but no. <laughs> All right, so we're going to open up on some fucking ate too many mushrooms and I haven't puked yet wisdom about the formlessness of pre-time. Oh, literal <laughs> quote. Here we go. Yeah. Once upon a time in a land, scare quotes, called forever, there was only awareness in awareness of itself. What? End quote. I would have been so much happier if he had just opened with, ha, bought the book, no refunds. <laughs> I mean, come on, like, I'll smoke your pot, but I'm not going to blow you. Yeah, right. Just <laughs> well, and his second paragraph starts off by complimenting his first paragraph. It does. <laughs> Did I just blow your mind? No? Read, read it again. <laughs> you, know, you know, this is your fault. This is your fault. <laughs> and he's like, hey, do you notice how my first paragraph captured the essence of all religion? Yeah, that's because they all have uh, existing ness. <laughs> um, nailed it. Right, yeah. So to be clear, he's opening with this whole, like, all the religions are really the same. If you think about it, look, the universality of religion is only there to the extent to which you don't know about any of the other religions. <laughs> he's like, that opening paragraph just before this was fucking great, right? Yeah. Okay, moving on. That compliment about the opening paragraph was <laughs> fucking great, right? Okay, okay, seriously, moving on. That compliment about the compliment. No, I'm in a loop. I'm in a loop. I don't know what to do. Well, I, I mean, honestly, I wish he'd gotten stuck in that loop because then we wouldn't have gotten to quantum quite so quickly. That's that's <laughs> By the end of page one, we've already moved on to quantum. God damn it. Yeah, he explains that ancient people totally knew about the Big Bang and black holes and stuff. You see, flat earth on the back of the turtle is just a metaphor for... All the science. Yeah, right. No, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so his thesis, he states it right here. He's going to demonstrate that one, the themes of all the various religions are basically correct. No, they're not. Okay. Nope. Well, Heath, he does say emphasis on basically there. <laughs> That's weird that he said that. Yeah. Still no. <laughs> Maybe even more so now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Number two, most people are doing religion so bad that they're actually doing opposite religion, if you think about it. So just to be clear, his thesis, his numbered thesis is religion is correct, but everyone doing it is wrong. Well, except him. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and number three, we should worship ourselves. Which, which really was him saying, OK, final part of my thesis. I am God. Yep. <laughs> and uh, moving on. How cool was it when I said I'm God just now? <laughs> right? Right? Did I blow your mind? I'm, I'm God. Me. Yeah. So he starts off with questions like, who am I and where am I? Which is which is nice because those are the most complex questions that I trust him to answer. <laughs> right. And he illustrates this with yes! figure four, a picture of a man wearing a blindfold. <laughs> Fun fact, a device that does not prevent you from knowing who you are or know <laughs> what you are unless you're as stupid as David Icke. <laughs> All right, David Icke, I'm just going to put this blindfold on you for a second. I'm Stevie Wonder. Where am I? What's going on? <laughs> All right. See, you're not allowed to be the volunteer for the magic act anymore. How great was it when I thought I was Stevie Wonder? <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so this is where he explains that step one of his program is to stop believing in reality, which is a bold but ultimately necessary step one. <laughs> but, it's, but he explains that since atoms are mostly made up of empty space, the fake media doesn't know shit. <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> and apparently he's going to be in a very shouty fight with his keyboard yep. for the whole book. He says, ask people if we live in a physical world and they'll say, of course we do. But actually we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> <Yeah. He actually laughs> <types> <laughs> Fuck you. No, we don't. Yeah. Real quote, if I may. 
I chuckle when I hear the fake news mainstream media dismissing other versions of events as conspiracies and too far-fetched to believe while reporting the world from the perspective that everything is solid. <laughs> End quote. You stupid whore. I bet you think I can't put my hand through this table too, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> so dumb. Yeah, okay, so he, he makes a ton of fucking noise about this shit that like, well, things aren't even really solid. We're mostly empty space. Yeah, look, man, when we realize that electromagnetic fields interacting with each other were what stopped us from being able to put our hands through tables and shit. The presence of those fields became what solid meant. Right? Solidity didn't cease to exist as a concept. <laughs> right. Exactly. Another great quote. Many of the things I say are happening would not be possible if reality was physical and solid. And <laughs> <laughs> True. And yes, not correct. a great sign for your case, David. <laughs> hey, David Icke, um, J.J. Thompson figured out atomic structure in 1984. I'm plumb pudding. I'm now pudding. What's <laughs> happening to me? He goes on with the whole, like, you know, if the nucleus was the size of the peanut and the electrons, yada, yada, yada. But I'm like, yes, dude, but the... But the nucleus isn't the size of a peanut, though. <laughs> I'm a pudding giant. I have no idea what's going on. Whoever gets this plum pudding model thing from J.J. Thompson, the one person I'm very happy about. Whoever, whoever that is, let me know. Yeah. It was an awesome joke for so. them only. <laughs> well, and then, and then he just, out of the blue, he goes, kind of makes that racism deal look a bit ridiculous, eh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Seriously, that's not an exaggeration by Noah just now. This is what he says. He says, okay, well, the nucleus is much smaller than the atom. Very next sentence. So just fucking relax about all the big <laughs> stuff. Seriously. Oh, See, I thought he was going for it was like, we're not so different because we could all fit inside a sugar cube. <laughs> if there just wasn't space between our atoms. Right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Is he, and he starts talking about like, I just imagine all that cool shit that's going on outside the visible light spectrum, huh? huh? Yeah, he's, he seems pretty sure that if we could see whatever is in between purple and red, there would be no more wars. <laughs> oh, it just says Black Lives Matter between purple and red. Weird. Holy shit. <laughs> Crazy. Well, look, unseeable does not mean undetectable or unknowable. Right. Like he, he gets that wrong throughout. Like, if, in fact, the fact that we know that there's ultraviolet and infrared is proof that it is detectable. All right. Just stop whining about racism. No, <laughs> <Cut it out. laughs> oh, quantum something, something, something. But like his entire argument in this whole section seems to be eh, there's all kind of weird shit going on. So why not my weird shit? <laughs> and then he pretends that the fucking like quantum physicists are the mystical shamans of science or something. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> New rule. No saying quantum to explain your Thank thing. Thank you. Just, just <laughs> not ever unless you've studied quantum if physics. If your thing is quantum yes. physics. Yes. <laughs> right. That's the exception. Every single time someone says that word, they're trying to do some stupid argument like this. I ask, okay, without saying the word quantum, what is quantum physics? And every time the answer is quantum. Hats. <laughs> yep. Or counter proposal if you're going to use quantum, you have to start explaining all your bullshit with quantum woo. Right? Your wife walks in on you fucking another woman. That's quantum entanglement, baby. <laughs> so We're doing upspin. Come on. Right? That's good. That's good this, is, this is one charmed quirk. So, of course, we've already got quantum. So, by page six, Tesla makes an appearance. Uh, Tesla, by the way, totally would have agreed with Davey about all of this. <laughs> Yes, quote, <laughs> as a real scientist, Nikola Tesla said long ago, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of our existence, end quote. Yeah, yeah. Also, also here's my death ray that doesn't work, and I'm in love with a fucking pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently Nikola Tesla would agree that Government, science, medicine, corporations, education, and media are all a scam. That's what happens right after this. Yep. David Icke literally calls this, <laughs> quote, mainstream everything. Yep. Yeah. We're all being fooled by big everything. <laughs> go big or go yep. home. <laughs> and, and then he says, I'm a duelist, but he's really dumb, so it takes him a super long time. <laughs> so long. He says, Awareness is everything. And then he very slowly realizes that awareness has to be of something else. Yeah, mm -hmm. So yeah. there would be another thing. <laughs> and then he argues with his keyboard some more. He lands on 
Okay, it just is. Yes, it is. It is so. It has isness of <laughs> everything in this. He literally spent 463 words. I counted this whole section. 463 words to say it is. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Maybe this is too specific a reference, but sometimes we're all at like an atheist convention or something. And there's a crazy person who's talking to Noah about science because they let crazy people in. And Noah likes science. So they're talking about space or stars or whatever. But then the crazy guy tips his hand by being like, and I can actually see Bluetooth waves. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that moment in time when that man says that is this chapter. Yeah. This this is the oh would you look at that I forgot to refill the t-shirts <laughs> of chapters. Yep. There might as well be figure whatever Noah patting his head. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, his fucking figures, his Ill what does he think pictures in books do? They're just crazy person <laughs> memes that don't add any new information. No, citation 9, this blacklight poster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, David Ike very clearly watched what the bleep do we know? And he was like, yeah, so, okay, no, that all makes sense. I mean, water can be pugnacious and um, <laughs> Marley Matlin can dunk a basketball like yeah. she's holding turbo in NBA Jam. That all makes sense. Yeah. But they seem to have no idea in this movie that I, David Icke, am the quantum godhead. I, I, I'm going to get it. I'm going to write a book and I'll have little figures just like, in, just like in the movie. That. I also, by the way, figure 12 is there in case we needed a visual representation of droplet to jog our memories on what those <laughs> are. Yeah. Well, he's explaining the sentence, the droplet is the ocean and the ocean is the droplet, but not every droplet is as aware as the ocean if they become perpetually isolated from the whole. So I get it. Well, I, I get why a he thought he needed a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and then, God damn it, he literally starts telling us about that time he tried ayahuasca. Not oh. blowing you. I told you so many times. <laughs> <laughs> he says... I have taken psychoactive potions Jesus twice. Christ. We did it, everyone. We found a douchier way to talk about drug use than Joe Rogan. Yeah, we right? found it. God, and then he, like ayahuasca induced hallucinations, those are profound sources of knowledge. The scientific method, fake fucking news, right? Yeah, so then I masturbated with a drum circle, and uh, that's why bigotry is a lie and science is fake. Okay, <laughs> next chapter. How cool was it when I said bigotry is a lie? <laughs> 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 right? And then, of course, ghosts show up by page 10. Yeah, we learned that ghosts can pass through walls because they're operating on the same frequency as radio waves. Sort of. Yeah, uh, I get it. You know, sometimes you're driving through the mountains. Uh, all you get is a little girl who fell down in a well and drowned. It's like a real <laughs> bummer. <laughs> right? So, okay, and then he tells us about an energy field that surrounds us. Penetrates us and God damn binds it. the galaxy together. All right, no, I'll blow you. <laughs> no, Damon. I'm not running around with you on my back. Nice try, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, apparently the reason we can't walk through walls is because we all vibrate wallishly. Well, yeah, right. And, mm -hmm. no, we bump into it. And David Icke, he's learning to vibrate unwallishly. So that's, <laughs> that's going to be cool whenever he figures that. I guarantee you, 100%, Hundo P guarantee he has hurt himself. Many times trying to <laughs> oh, do that. I'm pretty no sure question. I'm vibrating left this time. Hold on. I think I got this. We also get this baffling quote. We give names to, scare quotes, different oceans like the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian, but they are the same body of water. What? <laughs> well, so like technically... I need a visual aid. I don't understand. <laughs> what is a droplet anyway? <laughs> well, no, so we have a visual aid. We have figure 17 wherein the phantom self is represented by a dude wearing VR glasses with eye stickers on the... Ice. <laughs> what? Anyway, okay. And then we talk NDEs. <laughs> yeah. Great. He seems to recommend them as a great way to see that all the allness and none of the nonness... And I just want to say, as, as much as we make fun of David Icke, I want to be clear, we here at The Scathing Atheist are in favor of David having as many near-death experiences as he wants to have. <laughs> really? Do it. Get out there and find the truth. Walk through that wall one more time. <laughs> <laughs> and then he puts out a roomy quote, and I'm like, yeah, no, the fact that your worldview hasn't progressed beyond 13th century mystics seems a point of pride <laughs> that you should brag about in your book. Yeah. Okay. In fairness, though, he also has a quote from the famous you know, modern quantum physicist, 
uh, Leonard Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got the quote wrong. If I remember correctly, Leonard Cohen wasn't talking about the, being the isness of yes in any of his songs. <laughs> the quote was, get my quote out of your stupid fucking book. I'll beat you to death with my guitar. It was closer to the thing I said. Also, by the way, the pictures on page 14, both of them, he already used on page eight. Did you honestly think I wasn't going to notice that droplet picture showing back up, you asshole? <laughs> oh, God, but yeah, but so far the book's message could be succinctly summarized by that stupid fucking coexist sticker. <laughs> yeah. And a cookie doused and cum in the middle of a drum circle. Yeah, or, or yeah. That, that'll, that'll cover it. A coexist sticker doused and cum in the middle of a baking circle. There you go. Yeah, any of yeah. those would have done. Baking circles have come in a... No, I don't have it. Yeah, I don't have it. Right. We'll, get, we'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. <laughs> a sticker eating cum... Nope. I, I thought I had it. Go. So another quick quote to show you what we're dealing with here. Quote, The still and silent all that is produces what is called creation through the imagination of its point of attention, large and small. Really got to refill these t-shirts, man. It's been <laughs> wonderful meeting you. So There's great. so many yeah. sizes that we have to keep track of. So. <laughs> and right after this, we learn apparently evil happens because all that is, which is his like divine character. Mm -hmm. So all that is, it has a little bit of ADHD. Yep. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, the atomic bomb, uh, I get it. There's some bad stuff. That was all that is. Just making a doodle in the margin during a daydream and then being like, fuck, fuck, sorry, sorry. That's, <laughs> ah, that is canon now. I, really, <laughs> I uh, gotta keep that now, I guess. You guys have to you figure it out. <laughs> sorry, though. <laughs> but section summary, David Icke is smarter than all the scientists and philosophers. Yeah, scientists are all wrapped up with mainstream everything, but it's really all about, uh, you know, underground jam band alt everything. <laughs> We're reading 689 pages of a guitar solo on a dat tape. I'm <laughs> exhausted. I just, little personal anecdote. I was reading this after just having had my pupils dilated yeah, to the uh -huh. eye doctor. So the only way to see this was to hunker an inch and a half away from my iPad like an Elizabethan bookkeeper with a single candle. <laughs> it was never worth it. No. <laughs> No, and an right. iPad that they had, that bookkeeper. <laughs> so, and then we learn that other dimensions are just other frequencies of reality. Right. Sounds a little confusing, but don't worry. <laughs> There's a visual aid. Yep. <laughs> so, you know how radio and television signals are <laughs> kind of like a centaur and a, a lion <laughs> fighting an alien on a dartboard next to Neptune and a Native American guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like that. That's precisely oh, the picture. That is the picture. Us. You guys got it. All the stoner nephews of the world banded together to illustrate this book. <laughs> oh, God. Then he explains what quantum computers are. No, he doesn't. He goes, <laughs> he goes like, if our universe wasn't a quantum computer, where would all the quantum physics come from? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he answered his own rhetorical question in a way that contradicts himself. Because the answer is... A, a Wi-Fi hotspot made of the isness existed mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unlike regular computers, which only do ones and zeros, quantum computers can do all the numbers, <laughs> <laughs> infinite numbers of numberness. Oh, oh god! And by the way, I should point out that this has been like, I, what are we on the third paragraph in the book at this point? <laughs> right? Like it's it's like he's he's afraid that if he lets the paragraph end, we will leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be fair, I would fucking have loved to have left by the end of this right, paragraph. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, he, he got like, he got three pages into laboriously paraphrasing Morpheus's, you know, but what is real speech? <laughs> and then he quotes it directly. <laughs> yeah. He left out the quote from Descartes, though. Uh -huh. uh, I think the quote from Descartes was, Hey, Leonard Cohen, will you beat the fuck out of David Icke with a guitar if he uses anything related to anything I've ever written sometime in the future? Great. Uh, and then acupuncture shows up by page 21. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Acupuncture meridians are just like a motherboard on a computer. Uh, uh, he'll explain, though. Oh. He'll explain. So, you know how you can jam needles into the motherboard computer? <laughs> <laughs> He's done. That's the yeah, explanation. That <laughs> Only David I could be wronger than fucking acupuncture. <laughs> I love the point he's making is that acupuncture meridians are lines and motherboards have lines on them. <laughs> so, oh, is that the point? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yep. okay. Well, nailed it, man. Yep. 
Oh, and by the way, okay, this is amazing. On the fucking caption under figure 35, it says that video games, quote, hack the five senses. Okay. (laughs) Is there an olfactory gustatory component that I've been missing this whole time? Like, what does what does untitled goose game taste like? (laughs) War. Oh, okay. I asked an answer, I guess. Yeah. All right, moving on, a little more quantum wisdom here. If you get quantum enough, the rocks will talk to you. Mm-hmm. That is the opening sentence of this subsection. God damn it. <laughs> I'm reading a book by a guy who describes rocks as literally, quote, inanimate phenomena. That's how he says rocks are. Is David Icke winning? I do. I feel like he's <laughs> winning. We, we certainly aren't. I can tell We're you losing, that. yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so uh, yeah, so, but the point here basically is that plants can hear, ergo mountains think. Okay, okay, new addendum to the quantum rule. We're going to have to add rules all the time, I'm guessing. David Icke does not get to say ergo or any (laughs) synonyms for ergo. Just letting him put sentences next to each other, that's already generous. That's very problematic already that he's allowed to do sentence and then sentence. I don't like it. Fun fact, though, if you swap out all the ergos in this book with... But of course, that doesn't mean it's a good book again. It yeah, makes no, sense. It, yeah. Well, well, I don't know. It, what it makes sense. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> More. Uh, then he says things about DNA, and I challenge anyone on the fucking planet to describe what he did in more detail. <laughs> what? DNA is oscillation. Mm hmm. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. That's, that's your fucking chapter, man. I just yep. did it better than you. That was more useful. Very yep. much. Dwight Schrute did a better job. Yeah. So, yeah. So now he points out that pretend surgery is just as good as real surgery. Better even if you think about it because it's cheaper. Yes. That's because, again, quote, everything in all infinite existence is consciousness slash awareness interacting with itself. <laughs> Surgically. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Crazy shit. And then he gives us a quick primer on the function and form of DNA. This is where we learn that so-called junk DNA is actually where all the magic bits are hiding. Yeah, he (sighs) makes the claim that 95% of DNA appears to have no function. Right. He's pitching the only movie dumber than Limitless and Lucy. It's uh, limited. (laughs) I like Limitless. How dare you? (laughs) All right, so but then the the evil doctors and and big pharma, of course, are the ones that are hiding all the life extending DNA magic. <laughs> okay, so here's what I learned from this section: David Ike definitely tried to create a quantum leaping baby by hitting tuning forks during conception, and his wife was like, "You got to fucking stop that! We're absolutely not doing that." I don't know, Heath. There's no way a tuning fork isn't a more pleasant sound than David Icke having an orgasm. <laughs> hold, it, hold it right next to my ear, though, or I can't hear it. Yeah. How great was it my orgasm just a second ago, right? <laughs> Ding. Yeah, this is better. All right. Well, I had it in my notes that we would make sure to wrap up before this segment talked about what David Icke's orgasms were going to sound like. Clearly, I have failed myself and the listeners, so we're going to wrap it up here. But as much as I'd like to say that's because we reached the end of the chapter, it's not. So we'll be back with the second half of chapter one on the next edition of God Awful Books. Before we reach the 60 minute mark, I want to remind all the people who have been taking the pandemic seriously and minimizing their travel and masking up and doing without that we're almost there. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. It sucks that anybody has to ask more of you, but we're almost there. You've handled it for a year. We can get through a couple more months of this, but we are almost there. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptic Rat, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Monday, an even newer episode of our sister show's Hot Friend Godawful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half-sister show, Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, this episode would be the shadow of an echo if I neglected to thank Heath Enright, who is remarkably trimmed for a guy with the word eat in his name. I need to thank Eli Bosnick who is remarkably honest for a guy with the word lie in his name. I also need to thank the lovely and talented Lucinda Lusions who has the word sin in her name. I also want to thank Dr. Kimberly Urban for both the Farsworth quote and all the important shit she got back to afterwards. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's most memorable mortals, Forrest Hammer, Apathory, Skunky Nuts, Just Chris, Please, David, Mike, Michael, Marcus, Joel, Brendan, The Brian, D, Andrew, and Dean. 
Forrest, Tamara, Pathory, Skunky Nuts, and Just Chris, please, whose wit gives Sonic the Hedgehog quickness envy, David, Mike, Michael, Marcus, and Joel, whose ejaculations are factored into the local tide charts, and Brendan, the Brian, D, Andrew, and Dean, whose IQs are so high, Felix Bumgarner tried to parachute off of them. Together, these 14 ferocious freethinkers fought the fuckery of foundationless faith by forking over a few fragments of folding money. Not everybody has spare folding money, but if you do, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingadius, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingadius.com. And if you'd like to help, but not in a money kind of way, you can also help a ton by following at PIATPod on Twitter, liking our Facebook page, and telling a friend about the show. The legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Martin Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, death threats, find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingadius.com. It'd be awesome if if ZipRecruiter we we just did the same theme for the ZipRecruiter ad. We just had Heath also microwaving a banana to fuck in this one, and just for no reason, you know, just let the ZipRecruiter intern figure it out. <laughs> we he they use the must reads. I don't. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure somebody was fucking a banana peel, but I don't know for sure. I don't. And then know. they just went straight to the must reads. So technically, they did it. I don't know. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.